another video. And today I'm at work in the garage because the weather is awful. You can probably hear it. These aftermarket wheels are coming off and I'm putting on some genuine mini Cooper S wheels. I know it's a Cooper, not a Cooper S, but they're going on because they look nice and I like them. Um, calipers getting painted red and just general clean up inside behind. Like the rear uh, swing arm, whatever the heck they call them. That's getting cleaned and painted with black hammer, right? So, not going to bore you all with every little detail in the video. But first things first, lock and wheel nuts. This one's a bit chewed up. So someone's been using it with a gun. So it kind of goes on. So, yeah, first things first, I'm going to make sure the lock and wheel nuts come off. And then I'm going to jack it up, put it on axle stands all round, get these wheels up, and paint the calipers, clean up inside, and go along with that. Boom. So that's the full lock and wheel nuts off. And... And they can go in the bin. Right then, so now we've got them on axle stands. The whole car is an axle stand, so we can get the wheels off now. But I've got my big Ugga Dug gun. Um, I use this to get wheel normal wheel nuts off. I never use one of these, electric one or air one or anything, apart from just a bar, to get locking wheel nuts off. The lock and wheel tools that you get, the little locks that you get to put in there, they can't really withstand the power of uh, a gun. So as you put them on, you can hear the that banging. They can't take that pressure. So you always round off and you damage them. And then all of a sudden you're stuck on the side of the road. Flat tire, can't get your wheel off because your lock and wheel nuts rounded off. But normal nuts like that. So, come out, that's them off. Now to uh, check them over, and I just want to check open anyway because, like I say, car's new to me, car seems alright, and uh, yeah, I just want to have a look. You can see it's had a new caliper at some point, so I've got two red calipers because it's got a new caliper at the back, that one's red and I think that one's red. But we're going to fresh them all up so they all look good. And it doesn't need pads, which is even better. So, we have the caliper. As you can see, it used to be red, but faded to well. So that's the hanger, and that's the caliper. First thing you want to do is just go over it with a wire brush. Get all the grime off. When you're done with that, get some brake cleaner. Get rid of all the dust. That will self evaporate, by the way. Then, when you get your caliper paint, the Norse red or whatever colour you've gone for. Let's go around the caliper. As you can see, it looks a lot better. A lot more fresh, a lot more sporty. And uh, yeah, just let it dry before you uh, put your wheels back on. Otherwise, you're going to have a nice red line for your wheel. Very good. So, I've just been editing this video and realised that the video part of it where I'm putting the wheels on, there's no sound. I think that microphone, which I'm going to chuck anyway because the sound quality from that is rubbish. Like right now, it's just literally my phone. Um, yeah, there's, there's zero sound. So, I'm <laughs> a couple of days later, and we actually have some decent weather for once in this British summertime. 
here are the wheels. We have what a uh, Mini Cooper S 17 inch with obviously you can see the red calipers behind it. I can tell you one thing. I think I'm massively certain it drives a lot better now. It's got a bit more of a fat tire to it because it's more comfortable. It's less jolty. Just get this change out of my pocket before it goes somewhere I can't get. Do you reckon that's going to stay? I don't think it's going to stay. I don't think it's going to stay. It might stay. It's going to fall. So we have less jolty ride and it just feels nicer turning, driving, it just feels nicer. Uh, look, that's all I can really say right now. It looks better. Looks a lot better. Oh, oh the water that comes down these windows is unreal. And what's annoying is I've literally driven this back from my work where I put the wheels on and it's filthy absolutely filthy a lot less jolty less knocky less jolty and it looks better and it's a bit more original because obviously they're proper mini wheels yes the Cooper S wheels they're still mini wheels and they still look good so go for a quick drive So the microphone I've been using, it's a Bluetooth thing that you plug into your phone, mic microphone, Malark, and it's cheap. This is moving. It's moving! Stand it, sit like this, so I'm in the middle of the frame. Not very good, but we digress. I buy better. Gonna have to. It's currently 18 degrees. 18 degrees. Oh. oh, I've just gone over a slightly sunken pothole and there's no jolt. See, I told you this will move. Because my phone's at this angle, not this angle. You're not going to let me out, are you? You're just going to turn in like the Lexus arsehole you are. So, move for a quick spin. Next thing to come up with this Mini, I'm looking for a front aero spoiler, uh, spoiler, aero front bumper, preferably in electric blue, to go on the R50. Mini, look at my hair. Right, tell us the morning time. Oh! Oh! Didn't quite catch that right, did I? Let's go for it. Caught that one better. Break the corner. Round the corner. Give it some more. There's a random postman. front tyres I put brand new road X's on and I can tell you one thing they're impressing me they were cheap because the road X but when I brought this car home from work after putting the wheels on brand new tyres not been on the road yet and they're cheap so I was like mm, these aren't going to be very good in the wet so I give it a bit of corners I know are forgiving and they grip very well I'm very very impressed all the performance cars I've had in the past have had nothing but top not quality tyres um, Uniroyal Rain Sport 3's which are now a 5 they are very impressive in the wet impressive in the dry but they just they wear quickly um, Michelin Pilot Sport 4's 4S's 4S, 5's have had them all um, they're just all round brilliant no complaints whatsoever worth the money but Goodyear Eagle F1 they are something else 
when I had my Mark III Sertler and Cooper 280 pushing 418 horsepower, they were the only tyres which allowed me to properly hoon it without the hopping, even though even though it was poly bushed, the hopping. They were fantastic. And I had the asymmetric fives. And you can go one above, well it's asymmetric six now, I believe. But you can go one above and get the Eagle F1 Super Sports. But I stuck with the Eagle F1 asymmetrics because they last a bit longer. And I'll, I'm a bit of a sucker for value for money at the same time. They look good. They're low on noise. They were phenomenal in the wet. And they were just brilliant. Brilliant all round tyre. When I put them, I went the Nurburgring in it and I put Mark II Cooper wheels on 18s. And that had Goodyear, was it sport efficiency or efficiency sport? So I, just like a mid range Goodyear tyre. Ah, they were fantastic. Um, yeah, I've, and this is the first time I've bought a tyre which isn't a Goodyear. And I'm not regretting the decision at all. Not regretting at all. So yeah, sorry about this silly little change up in the video. Wasn't planned at all. Um, I will be doing some more videos on the Mini, obviously. And also some other videos that aren't concentrated around the Mini. So keep your lookout. Please like. Please subscribe and enjoy life.